So first announcement, the NVIDIA SDK, the essential tool for GPU developers. GTC is about developers. Today, this is your first announcement, a toolkit for you. Now let's talk about VR. There's been a lot talked about in VR. VR is not just a new gadget. Just as your cell phone is not a new gadget. It's a brand new computing platform. When NVIDIA was start, first started some 25 years ago, the LCD display had just come out. Prior to that, it was really CRTs. If it wasn't because of the LCD displays and making it possible for you to have thin displays, light displays, displays you can hang on the wall, computer graphics would never have been nearly as prolific as it has become. If it wasn't because of LCD displays, your mobile device wouldn't be nearly as useful as it has become. Because of those dynamics, the confluence of several factors has made it possible for virtual reality to happen, to, for virtual reality to become a reality. Head mount displays are now light. The resolution is high. Computer graphics performance is incredible. The combination of all of that is going to enable this new platform to allow new applications and new experiences to be possible. Now, we've already talked about video games. Video games is relatively clear. Who wouldn't want to be on the field of battle? Who wouldn't want to be running down the hall, chasing down monsters? All of those types of experiences are very natural, and you can imagine that extrapolation into VR. It's also very natural to imagine that VR would change how we design experience products. Virtual design of cars, essentially a virtual showroom so that you could look at your car design on a daily basis instead of after you create the clay from it. You could be literally standing next to that car. Architectural design, of course. Very, very obvious things. But there's some things that are really kind of cool about VR that we're starting to think about. Now, of course, VR could take you to places that you can only dream of. Places that are too dangerous, for example. Places that are too far. Places that are beyond your ability to reach. Those kind of experiences are also possible in VR. Some of the things that I'm super excited about in the future of VR, how VR is going to transform communications. There was a demo that was recently done by Microsoft, the HoloLens. The HoloLens demo is really quite groundbreaking. If you haven't had a chance, take a look at it on the web. But basically, you can put on your head mount, put on your glasses, the HoloLens glasses, and you can be communicating, you can be talking to somebody who is very far away, and that person is literally standing in front of you. Science becomes a reality. Really, really amazing thing. Well, today, during this show, we're going to take you to some places that you probably only dreamed of and you can't imagine going. The first of that experience is Everest. Now, what we've done, and you're going to you can see this at the VR Village. What we've done is we've used, partnered with several really fantastic companies. So far, VR Studio and the RVX, Real, um, uh, the, uh, the FX studio, worked together with us to recreate the Mount Everest experience. Basically what's happened is we've taken 108 billion pixels of images, used the technology called photogrammetry to reconstruct Mount Everest, pixel by pixel, Recreated into 3D, 10 million polygons in this room, in this, in this scene, and then used physics to simulate the swirling snow. All of that is going to be now displayed for you in real time. This is not a movie. In real time. In three full HD displays. Let's play it for the team. She has many names. To some... She is Sakamata, the goddess of the sky. To others, she is the apex experience, awe-inspiring, unforgiving, the pinnacle of human achievement. We know her as Everest.
Is that incredible, guys? That's great. Good job. So far, RVX, great partners. By the way, 108 billion pixels. That's the equivalent of 14,000 eight megapixel photographs on an iPhone 6. 14,000 camera, camera shots came together in this computer program, reconstructed into 3D, and now you could navigate through it. Okay, so please go and enjoy that. Now that's, that's a place that I can only dream of going. I can only dream of going, but I can imagine going. There are places where you can dream of going, and it's just not likely you're ever gonna go. And so over the last several years, We've worked with engineers and scientists at NASA and Fusion VR to recreate meticulously Mars. Taking dozens of, well, photographs from dozens of satellite flybys of Mars. We've meticulously reconstructed the surface using photogrammetry. Eight square kilometers, eight square kilometers of the Mars surface has been recreated for your enjoyment. Rocks hand sculpted, a million of them placed in an informed way based on the satellite images. The design of the rover, the design of the habitat, the design of the spacesuit, all original designs from NASA. And working together, working together, we recreated the Mars experience for your enjoyment here at GTC. It's going to be enjoyed for the very first time. Now, this environment is really quite amazing. The rover is physically simulated, so when it's bumping up and down the Mars terrain, it's reacting in a physically correct way. The lighting in the environment is wonderfully done, wonderfully rich. Global illumination is applied. High dynamic range is applied. There's even a lava tube. I understand that because of the gravity of Mars is only one third of here on Earth, as the lava carves through the subterranean caves, it leaves these massive caves and they don't collapse. And these caves are absolutely huge and you can only enjoy it by being in virtual reality. We could show it to you on screen, but it won't come near the grandeur that you will experience, that you're standing in front in, in the, inside this cavern. Well, I guess, the theory is that when we go to Mars, our habitats will be built in these caverns, these mile-long caverns, underground caves, so that we could be out of harm's way of radiation from space. Incredible, incredible recreation of Mars. Well, let me show it to you right now. guys. Now imagine you're going to have head mount displays in the VR village downstairs. You're now in the rover that even the sound in the rover was recreated or excuse me recorded by driving the rovers and Johnson Space Center. Okay, so that this will just give you this will just give you this will just give you a sense of the experience you're about to have. Now, before before we go any further, before we go any further, um, you know the question really the question it really is if you if we were to send somebody to Mars, and we wanted to send an astronaut to Mars, who would we send, and who who deserves the first ticket to Mars? And who would be more excited to be the first inhabitant of Mars? Well, you know, when we think about it, I mean, there's only one child, adult, childlike explorer who loves to do something nobody has ever done, wants to be first at everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Wozniak. Steve. Hi, Jensen. How are you? I'm so excited. Um, so, great you know, to be here. <laughs> you know, for, first of all, first of all, uh, you know, we recreated this, we recreated Mars. 
And engineers and scientists and artists have worked meticulously, painstakingly, to recreate every detail. And now, after billions of dollars of R&D, billions of dollars of R&D, we have now put ourselves in a position where we're ready to send one lucky astronaut. One lucky astronaut. And I heard an interview recently where you said that you, you would place, uh, uh, you would buy a ticket right off the bat for a one-way trip. Absolutely. I've signed up for a few. For a one-way trip. <laughs> now, you were, you were the first to build, you, you built the world's first personal computer. You built yeah, the it's... world's first a whole bunch of stuff. And in fact, uh, you were part of a company called Fusion IO, and you built the world's first high-speed streaming storage SSD based on an SSD so that we can have high-performance computing. And it turns out we're using a lot of that technology. You were first in a lot of things. And we thought that it would be great if you were the first to Mars. And this might be a one-way ticket. I am totally honored, Jensen. And NVIDIA makes it possible. Let's <laughs> see. I haven't done it yet. And so why do you want to go to Mars, first of all? I don't know. It's just one of those extreme things. It's, it's such an important step for humanity because it's so hard to do. It's so hard to get there. There are so many scientific obstacles that we have to overcome. And what do you want to do when you get there? Well, actually, whenever anybody gets there, I want to experience it in VR. I've been saying that for, <laughs> uh, for a long time now. <laughs> now, if it was possible, I'm, I'm serious here. If it was actually possible to go, would you actually go? Yes, I would. You would? Uh -huh. Yes, I would. And, Absolutely. And, and, and uh, when you get there, what would, what would be your profession? What would you do? So you've, you've been a yeah. computer architect. Learning. Uh, you've been a well, teacher. Studying, learning, communicating what I saw, um, inspiring other people to want to go there, maybe uh, escape Earth, mm -hmm. uh, global warming and all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think that the first thing you should do when you land and, and, and so I want to tell you this, just as a, as a, as a, as a favor for humanity, when, the first thing you should do when you land is please find Matt Damon. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do, if it's, vid if it's live video streamed back to Earth, I'm going to scroll, use my feet and dig out the letters mom. I'm <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the experience that Steve is about to have has actually never been done before, and I've not tried it yet. And I wanted to save that moment for Waz. So, Waz, why don't you go ahead and try it? Tell us how it is. Whoa. You look great. Just a moment. Yes. Oh, this is going to be it's, big, you guys. You look great. I can, supposedly, I can maneuver myself. Uh, I picked up the controller backwards. <laughs> Are you oh, familiar I'm with walking gaming? around. Yeah, now I've got, I've got <laughs> to find the rover, though. There's the rover. Whoa. Now, ladies and My gentlemen, God. I have to it, say why something. It, why do I feel weird? I feel weird like I'm actually moving and getting dizzy. And I think I'll enter the rover. <laughs> now I'm in the rover. And I can spin it around a little. Whoa. Now, all of this, oh all of this is made possible by our friends at Cisco. So... We con I contacted Ronan Trolla, who heads the, the Cisco telepresence. You know what, look, look at what's happening here. I'm talking to, I'm talking to Waz. Uh, his experience is actually being back to us, streamed back to us. Okay, so we're experiencing what he's experiencing from his VR classes. Wow. All of this stuff, Roland and his team, Roland and his team jumped on this, set all this stuff up for us, literally in a day, literally in a day. So I want to thank Roland, I want to thank Cisco, and uh, yeah, really appreciate that. Uh, and you won't on, believe the feelings when you do it. On the ground, Scott Newman and the team, you guys are doing a fantastic job. It's amazing what you guys pulled off in just the day. Okay, hey, hey, uh, Waz, I'm going to go back to, to do my job and uh, enjoy okay. Mars. Uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is not a one-way ticket. When you, when you find Damon, could you just let us know? Okay. Tell him is we're this, looking now for this is, am I on? Am I on Everest after global warming? Is that it? You know... You know Look, this, this is a trip to Mars. This is not a trip to Evers. This is going to be this incredible a... <laughs> for whoever gets to really do it. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy. I'm going to fall out of this chair. <laughs> well, Waz, that was not a helpful comment. 
<laughs> wow. All right, brother. I'll let can't thank you enough, Yeah, Jensen, I'll let you know when you can help me again. Oh, my gosh. What Infinity has <laughs> made possible. All right, really. you guys. Thanks a lot, Steve. Enjoy Mars. First astronaut on Mars.